delighted to be joined by Ian Hislop. Now, obviously, uh, and rightly so, uh, ITV's drama has got uh, lots of plaudits. Um, actually, before I come to you and talk about the work of private, I am going to go with Anushka, though. Yeah, I just want to talk through the timeline of the scandal, because it actually all started a long time ago in 1999 when Tony Blair signed off the Horizon system and interestingly Harriet Harman then a cabinet minister warned against it reportedly saying there was a serious risk the project would fail if I just fast forward to the 2000s the prosecutions began to ramp up when the post office CEOs were John Roberts and then Adam Crozier the number of prosecutions of sub postmasters grew and grew until a total of over 980 as Roberts said I will never forget interviewing one victim, Janet Skinner. Her story of being sent to jail in 2007 brought me to tears. An amazing woman. By then, an amazing man, Alan Bates, had flagged issues writing to his MP in 2003. He got a reply from the post office minister at the time, Stephen Timms, who said conflicts are contractual matters for the post office. When Computer Weekly broke this story in 2009 publicly, evidence suggested prosecutions were not meeting legal requirements. And then Private Eye, with their first story in September 2011, their relentless investigation was spearheaded by journalists like Nick Wallace and Richard Brooks. And you probably know that by then, Sir Ed Davey, now leader of the Lib Dems, was post office minister. Initially, refusing to meet Alan Bates, although he did later. He blames the post office for lying to him. He is one of 17 post office ministers since 2000 and 16 business secretaries. By this point, Paula Venels, as we know, was post office CEO. She has now handed back her honour. She said in 2015 there was no evidence of miscarriages of justice. By 2017, 550 postmasters brought a case to the High Court, which was settled for £58 million, and in total, they have paid out £138 million to 2,700 postmasters. Thanks, So, Ian, um, it's 12 years, yeah. maybe longer, uh, since you and Private Eye started noticing a, what incredible incompetence there was within the post office. Yeah, but I also... think that's generous incompetence. I think it is sort of willful um, lying when they knew the truth. And, 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 and obviously, think... and miscarriage. Why do you think it has taken 12 years? What does it say about our system of governance and government that it's taken 12 years to get to a point where maybe there'll be comprehensive pardons, maybe there'll be proper restitution? Well, I mean, the entire system, the judicial system and the supposed supervision in government preferred to believe the corporate bodies than listen to ordinary people. And the reason this drama was so good, and it really was good, people say to me, oh, God, I mean, so much for journalism. Actually, the journalism fed into the drama. Ooh, ooh, the drama, according to one post, sub postmistress today, she said two things tip this this drama and the fact that there's an election and the fact that politicians are wandering about now telling us how concerned they are and how deeply concerned they are and at best they say oh it's all ed davies fault really one lib dem every single man in charge of the post office after that was a conservative who was the prime minister when uh, paula venels the head of the post office was given a cbe it was a conservative government it was david cameron and he's still in the cabinet 2019, giving this woman a CBE for services to the post office, everybody involved knew that Horizon did not work. Now, Fujitsu, and I'm glad to see Alex Chalk getting serious here, I mean, we're talking perjury here, we're not talking incompetence. They stole the money from the, the sub-post mistresses. They stole their money and they put it back in the system. Now, that money has gone to fund post office bonuses and Fujitsu's profits. The government has continued to employ Fujitsu. What we need to do is say to Fujitsu now, we want compensation from you. How about, how about £1 million per sub-postmaster or mistress? That amounts to £1 billion, which is nothing compared to what the taxpayer has paid out 
to Fujitsu. It is absolutely disgraceful, this. And I'm going I'm to rant now because there isn't much time. The idea that people are saying, you have got, you well, have got, you guilty have got, no, no, people could make have, a lot of it, money. It, They've it, already <laughs> made a lot of money. If people you have got more time, people in because the we are office. coming back to you in just a couple of minutes, so you have got more time, I should point out that there is a statutory inquiry going on. Yes. And I think we probably have to presume until we've got the, the verdict. No, the you've inquiry. got the judge's verdict in the biggest <laughs> yeah, miscarriage it is, it is, ever. It, it is certainly the case. It is clear. certainly the case. It's as I think I've looked you, at, Robert. It is certainly the case, having looked at the judgment, uh, that, uh, that, 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 that there are huge questions yep. to be asked about what Fujitsu disclosed and yep. why they didn't disclose And there is no reason for any of your lawyers to have a heart attack. We're not having a heart attack. We're not having a heart attack. We're not having a heart attack. Under no circumstances will I have asked that on air about something as interesting as this. Now, don't go away because, believe it or not, Ian in lively form will be back and so will Jess and Jake. Uh, welcome back. Ian Herslop is still with me. Now, whatever you think of Ian's passionate, uh, shall we say, criticism of uh, Fujitsu and of the post office, I am told I have to read out this statement from Fujitsu. It says this, the current post office uh, uh, Horizon IT statutory inquiry is examining complex events stretching back over 20 years to understand who knew what, when and what they did with that knowledge. The inquiry has reinforced the devastating impact on postmasters' lives and that of their families and Fujitsu has apologised for its role in their suffering. Fujitsu is fully committed to supporting the inquiry in order to understand what happened and to learn from it. Out of respect for the inquiry process, it would be inappropriate, apparently, for Fujitsu to comment further. I wonder whether they'll comment after having had <laughs> you. Yeah, well, I mean, that, that's, that's classic corporate nonsense, isn't it? It would be inappropriate. Of course it's not inappropriate. Comment but, now. But, but, yeah. but, 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 Fujitsu, what's your offer? How much money are we getting back? What? We're going to learn what happened. You knew what happened. The, the judge made it absolutely but clear I want, I, that but this I, money was sure. stolen. We do need, we do need, we do need to move on though to another aspect. Yes, it. you pointed out that uh, quite a lot of people, for their presumably political party political reasons, yep. have decided to have a go at Ed Davey. But how many reputations are going to be ruined by this, in your view? Oh, loads, um, right the way through. From the judge who refused to look at the original brilliant article in Computing Weekly and just said, no, 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 um, this, th this isn't right, I know the computer's right. I mean, it isn't that people think computers are always right. They were told by human beings who knew perfectly well that there was a blip in the system that the system was working, it was robust, it was perfect. It wasn't. And this presumption of innocence was serious people who sit on boards and are in charge of things know what's right. Ordinary people, i.e. sub-postmasters and mistresses, must be lying. No matter how many people said, look, Look, we know these people. They run our village. They are really good people. Mm. They weren't believed. And it took and that is so long. That is, that is astonishing. How do you think... Because among the many issues that I find incredibly difficult to get my head round is how you can have an institution like the post office that knows that sub-postmasters are sort of really valued members of their community and have been for decades and decades, how they can suddenly think that they've been invaded by a bunch of crooks. Well, they, it, it, it's so I weird. They, I don't think they did think it. That's the problem. Mm. Is that they maybe thought it at, at the very, very early stages. You should, as a constituency MP, you'll get a case in and you'll think, oh, I'm not sure about that. And then you get four more that sound really similar and you start to think, this is getting There's to a issue. critical mass. An issue. Mm. Um, but it, they lied. There was I no critical mass. No, no, but, but, but to they told so each the, one the of them, this is, is really important, they told each one of the complainants, you are the, the only, only complainant, one, yeah. and yeah. Exactly. that mm. is straightforward exactly. fraud. So, I think, the, I think the real thing, the point is, there was a mass cover-up yeah. by the post office, and as far as I can tell, to some extent, the civil service were complicit. And, 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 and there was a mass cover-up. And, 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 and the actually, other... the real thing yeah. that we should be talking about is, I know, Porter Van Ols has given up her CBA. I'd like to give it back to her because I want to see her stripped of her CBE, and I also want all of those bonuses that were given for oh, high-performing post serious office managers with your record on the honours system. <laughs> I mean, well, my can record, we, can we I have don't have a record on the honours, then? but I would like to see <laughs> those bonuses and performance-related pay but, but, stripped but, away. But, we did very I mean, you're certainly right, and I do, think it's a fundamental, I do think it's a fundamental issue, which, again, I'm slightly surprised isn't being debated 
more. Allegedly, this management, including uh, you know, Paul Reynolds, uh, turned the business around. But the, we now know, because of the hundreds of millions being paid out, those weren't real profits. No, they right? were incentivized. That, you know, this business was not turned around well, like from having a public service ethic bonuses, in which we they were operating in the public good. They were incentivised to make money for the post office. And that led to ignoring what was going on in the hope of getting better remuneration. And that's disgraceful. <laughs> and all of them should have to pay those bonuses back. 100%. But, I mean, but the problem we got in this country, and it's a serious problem, is no government has actually put in place any kind of system that actually enables clawback in these kind of circumstances. And in the end, you know, you're sort of relying on the goodwill of people to hand back money. Well, that's, when has that well, ever happened? One thing we well, do control is their massive taxpayer-funded pensions. We do have control of that, and we can pass an emergency piece of legislation, a parliamentary pardon. Why can't we do the same thing with their pensions? Well, why couldn't you do it so long ago? The fact that it takes 90 be drama and suddenly having been told their entire campaigning lives this is very difficult you'll have to go in front of a judge this is very very expensive oh this morning it isn't tomorrow we'll pass legislation and you're all exonerated I mean it is absolutely fatuous <laughs> for this government to claim hey we're really acting now did nothing did nothing oh, no, sorry, the whole sorry, time okay. sorry that no you're is, not sorry, that is demonstrably not sorry that is demonstrably complete and utter Why did nonsense. you give her a CBE that, in 2019? Why did you, a CBE? Why did you appoint you what, her to the Cabinet elite, Office? You talk her over nonsense. everyone else and you've been doing it in the entire programme. Shh, Ian, Ian, let him speak. <laughs> Two wrongs don't make that a right. That programme, <laughs> which you claim to love so much and was an amazing piece of drama put together by... What, you're saying I don't ends, like her? Ends. Why am I claiming to love that programme? Ends. I did like that programme. You can't just talk nonsense and not it's be interrupted. It's not nonsense. That programme ends in 2019 with that court case. Yeah. In the intervening period, yeah. we £130 million yeah. plus has Actually, been paid out. Actually, you did say that earlier, Jake, and unfortunately, I'm going to tell... And the government has said... Annoying, go and ask. Over. The programme's over. over. No, no, we've got the question. All right. I don't think we're going to have a chance to tell you what's coming next week. Um, but anyway, bye, everybody. <laughs>